Steve, we were with you in Oshkosh when you unveiled the MVP, and it was considerably warmer that July <laughs> than it is here today in January in Sebring. Give us an update on your project. Where do you stand now, vice where we were a year and a half ago at Oshkosh? Okay, well, now we have the design of the total outside mold line above and below the water line all locked down and finished. And we're just about to start building the prototype so we're about 18 months from having the prototype flying which we're uh, excited about and obviously very impatient to get it in the air and then hopefully about three years from production which is slower than we had hoped for but this is aviation folks and it takes time to do we're getting a lot of interest in the design from people and we're just looking forward to having it in the air so that we can show people that it really will do what we say it can do. As you move towards the prototype, are you finding that you're getting differences in what had been your projected performance for the airplane and what you're now looking at as you go towards production? Well, right now, the only figures that we're able to get are from some scale tests that we've done at various scale sizes but we haven't got a lot of flying performance data other than from out of the computer but so far we're pretty optimistic about the way it's going to hold up Mike Van Stagen and Robert Vess who did the aero work have spent a lot of time making sure that the design is as clean as possible particularly around the turtle deck area and around the engine pylon and so on the areas where you really can get a dirty design if you're not careful there are a lot of amphibious airplanes kind of in this class here at Sebring and, and as you look across the market I know yours is unique and that it'll land on the snow as well but what else sets the MVP apart from some of these other amphib designs what we think and what we're trying really hard to do is giving the owner as much utility as possible within the scope of an LSA platform so that you don't just fly it somewhere and then have to transfer to your boat or your raft or your tent but you've got that with you so that we're giving you as much use out of your airplane as you possibly can have and so in that way I think we differentiate Certainly from the reaction we're getting from people, the number of people who say, I've got access to a lake, I would love to be able to sit there with my fishing pole on the front of the airplane. It seems to be intriguing a lot of people. What's your price point looking like? Are you still looking in a competitive price point as you were when we saw you at Oshkosh? Yeah, we're now at 219. Uh, and that's with the Rotax 912 IS, but we think that's pretty competitive compared with the other amphibs out there, and we're doing everything we can to keep competitive. Great. Well, Steve, thanks very much. Good luck. I'm sure we'll see you at shows down the road, and, and we'll look forward to seeing the airplane fly. Thanks a lot, and let's hope it's warmer next time we meet. <laughs> <laughs>